Qualify, an on-demand screening platform allowing recruiting teams to phone interview hundreds of candidates in minutes, just raised $2.5 million in Series C financing. We'll chat with our CEO and get a demo next on the Right Tech Podcast. Hey again, Right Techies. Welcome to the only podcast that helps employers and recruiters connect with more candidates through Technology inspire conversations. Recruiting technology is the key to hiring great talent, and that's why this show exists. This episode is a vendor edition. Darian Michael is the CEO and co-founder of Qualify, an on-demand screening platform that recently launched. According to Darian, quote, uh, phone interviews are one of the biggest bottlenecks in the recruiting process. Back and forth scheduling and lengthy phone screens with hundreds of candidates quickly add up and can be costly, especially amidst a talent shortage where every minute and candidate interaction matters. Darren, well said. Welcome to the show. Thank you. I appreciate it. And uh, yeah, thanks for having me on. Yeah, really interesting to uh, talk to you today. I uh, was pretty excited about the product when I heard about it. Um, it's a very focused product, I think. Uh, something that, uh, you know, your overall uh, ROI here of saving recruiters time is a critical factor in any uh, recruiting technology out there. So uh, kudos on that job. So um, I guess Qualify came out of Techstars. Is that correct? Yeah. Uh, yeah. We us, went through, yeah, we went to Techstars. The company. Yeah, absolutely. So yeah, specifically with Techstars, we, we went through the Techstars accelerator, um, around this time of last year, actually, uh, 2021, we, uh, incorporated the business in March of 2019, myself and, um, there's three other co-founders. Um, so there's, there's four, mm-hmm. uh, four founders and, um, yeah, the, the origin stems from at least myself and, um, my brother is actually one of those co-founders as well. So he and I kind of shared uh, these pain points in the recruitment space from previous experience. And it led us to start on this journey, um, rope in the other two co-founders and uh, start trying to solve more recruiters problems. Um, for me, it was in a startup company prior to this, where I was mm-hmm. overseeing operations, which included um, HR and, and recruiting. And then my brother was, uh, in the home healthcare space, um, specifically at home health for elderly. And, uh, he also held the responsibility of recruitment among other things, um, and saw the pains, especially in like a high turnover environment that, that he was operating in. And so, uh, resonated between both of us and, and we, we kind of started off from there. Yeah. Interesting. Uh, now, did you already have a product before you went to Techstars, or did it actually was born in Techstars itself? No, yeah, we had a product. We were, um, we were grinding away for uh, the first first couple of years, effectively. And what we do is is pretty new still to most recruiters. We're we're usually ones introducing. It. We started pre pandemic, and if you remember, we were in like the lowest unemployment time period. You know, right before the pandemic, yeah. um, which we still had similar products. You know, what we do today is, has kind of helped true we just had different messaging at that point um but kind of a core through line of speed is everything in the world of recruitment and so yeah we we had the product at least the earlier version of it before tech stars and um I, I see tech stars as a big accelerant to you know where we're at today and 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 how we've been able to uh both attract investors and and attract customers as well yeah. uh within that program i think it was four months correct um, yeah, it's about, I think it's like 12 weeks of, of programming um, and then still ongoing support after the fact as well. And uh, we actually are, so we went through Techstars Anywhere, which is a remote first accelerator. It was remote first before the pandemic as well, but um, we didn't Was there an aha to- moment in there in that 12 weeks for you and the company and the product? So, so many. Um, I would example, say- yeah. Yeah, I would say one for me as a, this is less relevant to kind of the, the recruitment side and the customer side, but for me as a CEO, uh, the fundraising education that I got was, I think, pivotal to, you know, us being able to raise this more recent round that we just announced um, in my approach to it. Like I said, we were grinding for the first couple of years. We were attracting, like we were able to convince investors, but it was like living check to check and not enough resources all at one time to really make a big push. Um, and, you know, fortunately we were able to raise a small round at the same time of getting into tech stars. And then coming out of that, I had so much knowledge about 
um, the fundraising process, how to, you know, how to oversee and work with people and run a business. And then, um, and, and that I think has helped uh, again, raising this, this round that we just announced, uh, that we closed towards the end of last year. So, so walk us through the use case here. What's the problem you're trying to solve with the product? Yeah. So the problem that we solve, uh, simply put is, is phone screens are a huge drag, um, but also a necessary evil for a lot of, um, a lot of recruiters. Uh, we tend to work with recruiters that are doing high volume recruitment and they also tend to have lean teams. Their, their, uh, personnel to rec load ratio tends to be, um, I guess, low or high, depending on, <laughs> depending high, on what you put in, yeah. yeah, depending on what you put on the, the denominator, but, um, the one of the aha moments that we learned when we first started was that the phone interview is statistically the, the longest step in the hiring process. You know, averages show that it's around a week. Um, we've encountered a lot of our customers say that their phone interview step alone takes sometimes two weeks to complete. And that's because they're dealing with a multitude of candidates at the top of the funnel. They have to schedule, coordinate, and, you know, figure out the times that they actually are just play phone tag with these candidates. And then one by one, do 20 to 30 minute phone calls with each of them, um, ultimately to find that they're not going to hire most of the people that they talk to by definition. Yeah. Um, and so that is a, a huge pain point and it's usually repetitive, similar to questions. And so what we do is uh, enable them to pre-record those questions using their own voice stack those questions into a standardized and consistent interview and then scale by being able to invite uh, multitudes of candidates to respond um, at their convenience. Um, and that, that interaction for the candidates takes place over a standard phone call, making it really accessible and convenient. Okay. We'll take a look at that in a second. I heard a clip of uh, one of your clients on, on LinkedIn today talking about how they abandoned video interviews in favor of your phone-based screen. So are you aiming to kind of replace the video interview out there, the, especially the asynchronous ones that uh, you kind of deal in as well? Yeah, I would say that we, we have, uh, again, from a candidate's perspective, uh, I think the word he used in that clip was less intrusive. It's a less yeah. intrusive way of, of going about, um, or a less intrusive way of capturing information that's necessary to uh, understand the candidates more Um from a, if you think about it, just like at a broader level, people are used to consuming video content. So it's pretty natural to think that video interviews um, would work well in a lot of settings, but um, most people aren't used to being in front of a camera. So they're used to consuming, but not being the subject matter. And so that can create these awkward uh, situations and also just barriers. Some people don't have webcams, they don't have great environments, quality internet. Um, and so a lot of mishaps can happen or just, again, friction that creates drop off. Um, and so we're, we're really focused on that speed, the efficiency, the accessibility, and then also the bias mitigation piece of removing the visuals altogether um, and really focusing on what the candidate is saying um, and not necessarily where they're at or how they look when they're saying it. Yeah. I have a lot of uh, in common there. I used to recruit for a cruise line and we tried video interviews as kind of a screening tool and it didn't work. I mean, we had maybe 25% adoption overall. It just it, it didn't work. So yeah, I would think uh, something like qualify would have been a, a better tool to try anyway. Um, all right. So what kind of walk, walk, walk me through it here. If you could share your screen and just kind of walk us through a, a general uh, a demo of the product that like see how it works with the, what the recruiter sees, what the candidate sees maybe. Yeah. If you give me just a, a quick sec to see everything. Okay. okay. Yep. Yeah. So like you said at the kind of the top of the show, Qualify is a really straightforward, simple tool. And I think that's one of our uh, core advantages. And we like to maintain that simplicity, make it really easy for recruiters. So it's a simple, I would say, three-step process to get everything up and going. You need to start with questions. Um, so as a recruiter, you can come into our platform um, and you'll see I have questions already um, recorded here. Mm -hmm. We have Qualify questions as well that come um, built into the platform, professionally recorded questions, but most people, uh, like to have their own, you know, they have their own questions that they want to ask. So they can come in here, um, and simply record a new question. Um, they just simply need to type in, uh, a label for that question. The candidate won't see that label. Um, and then they can go in and record. So 
Can you please tell me more about your experience as it relates to this role? And then uh, it captures that audio. They can, re they can double check that or if they don't like it, record it again and then simply hit save and then it saves into their question bank. Okay. And then from there, once they have all their question, questions recorded, they can uh, create new, we refer to them as jobs, um, but simply uh, list out the, the title of the role. So what was a, what's something that you were, when you were doing talent acquisition for the cruise line? Uh, cr crew member. Yeah. Crewmates. Yeah. Yeah. So they can, can upload, you know, this is that if you're using this out of the box, um, you can upload a job description just so the candidate can see it right before they take the interview. You can require resumes, okay. things of that nature. Um, but to stack the interview or to create the interview, you just simply double click on the questions that you want to uh, include that you can sort in a specific order. Um, so that's like one of the, again, really simple. You can also build off of previous um, interviews that you've created. So maybe the crew member is very similar, similar to an office manager and you can, uh, use that template to, um, create the, create, create that interview set. Yeah. Uh, from there, you're able to enter keywords that you want us to listen for. So we record the audio from the candidate and also transcribe it, um, once the responses come back. And um, so you get into keywords that you want us to listen for. So I always refer to like detail oriented, night shift. You can add a multitude of keywords in there and that's going to continue to expand for us in terms of the capabilities there. So um, adding the keywords does what though? Is it, uh, does it highlight those oh, keywords sorry. the answers? Adding the keywords as a recruiter tells you, you, you're telling us what you want qualify to listen for and then we will star those um, as candidates working. say those um, we'll highlight those in a couple of different areas as candidates uh, come back uh, or as responses come back right. and then from the recruiter standpoint uh, the last piece is uh, making your invitations so you can uh, again out of the box you can invite candidates um, individually you can add multiple lines um, or you can do a bulk upload upload lists of you know, up to 500 candidates at once if you really wanted to um, and, and really power through multiple candidates at once. So um, that's kind of the one to, you know, the, the steps of how you would work through as a recruiter. Um, so describe then, the experience for the candidate. In that, in that yeah. Case. And I'll do this all from like the desktop view. Okay. Um, but let's see. Hopefully you can still see my page. So yep. the candidate more often than not, the way that our recruiters use it, they're sending direct invitations. Um, so the candidate will receive a text or an email saying, Hey, we want to learn more about you. Um, we, we got your application, click this link to read instructions and respond to this interview um, at your earliest convenience. And that takes them to uh, the landing page that's built for that employer. Uh, so this, in this case, it's a, you know, qualifies logo, qualify colors, but brand in, in for our clients, it'll, it looks like their company, their color scheme, really straightforward, um, step-by-step uh, -step instructions, uh, with the ability for them to, uh, enter their, well, in this case, I'm showing you like kind of this job share link. Um, but if you got a direct invite, your name would already be listed here. And all that you would see on this page is just a spot for you to enter your phone number or your phone number would be already programmed in. And um, with your information inputted, um, you'd be able to click start interview. And at that point, you're able to confirm in our system dials your phone directly. Um, so you're, it's not a web-based uh, system. The phone, it's an actual phone call. So mm -hmm. again, uh, increasing that accessibility um, and, and, uh, making it way more convenient so people can take these at any hour of the day nighttime um in the workflow once you're or the the flow once you're inside of the interview process it's very similar to um responding to a voicemail um, you're going to hear the recruiter's voice asking you that question uh, followed by a beep and then you respond and hit pound to go to the next one so it's very conversational compared to um, a lot of other uh, one-way interview tools. 
um, in the sense of a lot of them require you to like read something and then hit start and record. In this case, it's more of a live format where you're hearing a question, you respond, and it's the back and forth that you know, you're more familiar with. Yeah. So after the first question, you can't answer it. Uh, your system just like waits a few seconds and asks the next one or kind of prompts. No, them. no, you hit, you hit pound and then pound, the next okay. one plays. Yeah. Very cool. Very cool. Yeah. So it's uh, really simple, right? Really straightforward, but, but really powerful. We've been seeing a lot of, I mean, like the, the clip that you referred to spoke to, you know, the response rates and um, how they're like, that their no show times have gone down and uh, things of that nature. We were, we were really focused on helping recruiters save time and we've held true to that. Um, but there's been really a lot of really other cool uh, stories and case studies and just the ROI that we didn't expect. That's been really awesome for me personally to, to see. Yeah. Come about. What kind of uh, roles are your clients using for these, for this technology? Yeah. So we have clients of different industries and, uh, ranging at different sizes as well. I'd say primarily though, um, hourly workforce. Um, so, uh, blue, gray collar roles, service-based roles in nature. Um, ones that tend to be higher prone to turnover. Um, that's where we align really well with volume recruitment, which usually is kind of coupled with that, that space. And so, um, yeah. What's a gray collar role. I haven't heard that term before. Great collar, kind of like in between, uh, like middle skill. Uh, so middle in between white levels. and blue? Yeah, basically. <laughs> <laughs> I think there's a lot of different collar colors. So I mean, you, yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it's green collar. Yeah. Right. Green jobs, I guess. Interesting. What, um, I'm curious, Darian, what challenge do you think you face selling this type of tech into HR teams? You mentioned before that it's kind of new, right? Uh, I'm not used to this, but what have you seen so far from, uh, just employers talking to them and, and uh, what any kind of pushback are they giving if any? Yeah, no, I would say that is uh, the biggest challenge, but we've um, been able to get a lot more wins under our belt and have a lot more to show for it um, with our growth. Um, and so that's becoming less of a challenge, but what I will say, which is really great to hear um, is that talent acquisition pros really care about their candidate experience. And that's something that is, top of mind when they're evaluating any tool. And so um, that's not a challenge for us because what we found is that candidates really enjoy this experience. They, they often prefer it. Uh, it tends to be less pressureful for them and uh, it adds convenience for them. So they're, they're able to, you know, take, like I said, take these interviews when it works for them and it tends to be a lot faster turnaround time. And so, um, but I will say that is the, a lot of the pushback is, is usually like, you know, do candidates like it? Um, cause they see the value for themselves, but they want to make sure that they're not losing value by creating a less than stellar experience. And, and that's what we, we care about as well. Yeah. Like, like I wouldn't see, you know, you sending this to any kind of high level pro candidate prospect, right. That you really want to talk to. I mean, uh, that would be kind of put them off, I think, but for these lower level roles, I do think it's a good thing overall, but, uh, yeah. have your clients, um, is there like a, a candidate in that, you know, in that database that's said something that wowed one of your clients? Uh, if so what, how did that go? Do you think? Uh, wowed them in terms of, uh, their answers. Yeah. Oh, I'm sure. I'm sure. Um, I was going to, I was going to piggyback off of what you said before in terms of like the types of candidates that, that would come through. Um, so one, I, I always say like, we use it ourselves and we, we, we don't hire for, at least to this point, all of our, you know, at qualify the folks that we hired have been salary high skilled positions for the most part. And, um, we've, I mean, people obviously work here and so they, <laughs> they've gone through that experience. They enjoy yeah. it. Um, but, uh, I, I think it's Is that on your job that, descriptions. You have to, uh, go through qualify in order to, apply. yeah. Part of like our, like, like when you fill it out the, uh, when you're submitting your application, I always ask, are you willing to do a qualify interview and give us your, the number you want us to, to send it to. Um, but I think it's partially the way you introduce it into your process and how you introduce it to candidates, telling them why you're doing it. It's not, and even like the, the stock or yeah, the, the default, you know, messaging to candidates is not, Hey, 
our recruiting team is really busy right now and we don't have time to talk to you. So take this interview. It's, Hey, we want to learn more about you. Oh, you want to make it convenient for you. And then it's even customizable. So we encourage people to, you know, tell their candidates why they're doing this. Maybe it's, we want to create a more fair and equitable process. We want to make it more consistent throughout each candidate experience, you know? Um, and so there's different reasons. And I think that uh, helps candidates feel more comfortable uh, in and just in general, people are used to interacting with technology in new ways these days with the pandemic and yep. just everything going virtual. So I think that that helps us as well. Yeah, it's a new new dawn there for, uh, for you um, uh, Gen Zers. And <laughs> what? How many like from your client base? Uh, what's the most uh, interviews you've recorded in one day with somebody? Any, uh, That's a good there? question. It's a good question. I don't know. It, offhand that answer i would say like we have clients that are you know for us a good with our stage and where we're targeting right now companies that are doing hundreds of interviews per month uh to thousands is is in our uh client base right now and we're continuously adding to our product and the capabilities of our product to you know scale up you know who we're who we're going after and who we can you know service um uh, like i said we want to be where the volume is at um, and so uh, we have some really exciting things on the, on the forefront for that. Um, what about actually listening to these things like, you know, versus a video, right? You, with that, the whole thing with video resumes is that like recruiters don't want to spend the time actually watching those. Mm -hmm. So why is this different? Tell me why it's different in terms of just because you're, you're listening to it versus watching it, but yeah, you think that's quicker inherently or. Yeah, I think it's, uh, uh, quicker. Yes. And, um, kind of, that, that intrusive word, you don't have to like necessarily sit and actively watch something you can, uh, listen. And it's a, it's a different way of consuming, uh, content in general. Um, I will say like kind of the way we refer to it is just like listening to a podcast or listening to a playlist. Uh, partially it's in the structure of how we play, play it back to you. So you don't have to listen to yourself talk anymore. Like you don't have to listen to yourself, ask questions, which okay. is usually half of an interview. You right. can listen to just the responses that come back. You can also okay. pick, you can pick That's and choose different. which responses you want to listen to first. Um, so an example I always give is, uh, maybe you're asking about compensation expectations, um, that the candidate might have, uh, and maybe you have a strict budget so you can go and listen to that response and, you know, maybe they're right in line. So you go back to the rest of the interview, or maybe they're asking way out of budget, you know, and so you can move on to the next candidate that much faster. And before that would have been a 20 to 30 minute call. Will it automatically just scroll through the next candidate uh, audio for them? Yeah, you can. Well, you can basically, yeah, just power through to the next candidate. Um, and then the last piece too, is just to get all the benefits of uh, audio playback. So you can pause, rewind, uh, you play in two X speed, if you like, if you're a power listener. Um, and then not only that, we, like I said, we have transcriptions as well. Um, and some, uh, and the keyword matching and exciting things in the forefront in terms of helping you to, uh, analyze and make more insightful decisions, um, beyond what you're just listening to or reading through. Well, I wish you luck with the product. I, I'll put you in, you know, sort of these interview intelligent tools that have been cropping up lately. There's actually another one in your city there, Pillar. Mm -hmm. HR, one of my clients as well. Um, uh, there's a few others out there as well, but um, interesting stuff, Darian. Uh, I look forward to uh, what's next from you guys and uh, keep up the good work. Tell everybody where to go to uh, learn more about you guys. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, you can find us at qualified.hr. Um, it's spelled with an I instead of a Y. So Q U A L I F I dot H R. And you can All find right. it. Find Did you try to get qualified.com. <laughs> No, uh, actually, maybe I forget. It's been a little bit, but I like I like what like what we have. <laughs> cool. All right. Well, that will do for this episode of the Rec Tech Podcast. Be sure to follow us on the socials: Facebook, Twitter, and LinkedIn. Via the at Rec Tech Media handle. See our podcast, video, and blog we publish. Thanks for listening or watching, everyone. And remember, always be recruiting.